In the previous video, we discussed about the COPD, which has two types, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. The chronic bronchitis has been already discussed. The video link is in the description. And now we are left with emphysema, which is also a part of COPD. The emphysema is a condition that involves damage to the walls of air sacs, alveoli of the lung, making it difficult to breathe. And in broader terms, it's the abnormal enlargement of air sacs, distal to the terminal bronchiole, which is accompanied by destruction of their walls. The anatomic site for the condition to occur is the echinus in the lungs, shown in the diagram. And in emphysema, the major pathological changes includes the alveolar enlargement and alveolar wall destruction. As we can see in this diagram, how normal alveoli compares with the abnormal one. The normal one has the separate air sacs with intact walls, whereas the emphysema one has got walls destructed with enlarged air spaces. Now let's see the types of emphysema. Here we see we have the normal echinus with normal air sacs, showing terminal bronchiole in yellow, respiratory bronchiole in pink, alveolar duct in blue and alveolar sac in orange. Now we see its types. First type is the centriachinal or centrilobular. As shown in the diagram, it has got enlarged respiratory bronchiole. This type is most common form of emphysema that occurs predominantly in heavy smokers and the affected sites in the lung are upper lobes and apical segments. Second type is the panachinal or panlobular emphysema as shown in the diagram where we can see all the portions of echinus are affected. This type is associated with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency protein. Then we have the third type of emphysema, which is paraseptal or distal emphysema. In this diagram, we can see it involves only distal part of echinus, and it mostly affects the upper half of the lungs. And last one is the irregular emphysema, as shown in the diagram, where no specific regions in the echinus are affected. It can affect sacs, bronchiole or any other region. So it's random kind of an emphysema and this is asymptomatic. Now let's move on to the pathogenesis of emphysema. We see we have the elastin protein in the lung tissue, which is important component of ECM. It maintains the integrity of lung parenchyma and small airways. And in case of emphysema, we get the release of proteases, which are basically elastases, released by the neutrophils. These proteases target the elastin and we get the destruction of lung tissue. Let's see this process in detail. We see we have the incoming secrete smoke or irritant. It stimulates the alveolar macrophages to release chemotactic factors, like we get the release of IL-8, CXC chemokinase and LTB4. These chemotactic factors in turn stimulate the neutrophils to secrete proteases in the form of neutrophil elastase, cathepsins and matrix metalloproteinases. These proteases or elastases target the alveolar wall and we get the alveolar wall destruction. But we see on the other hand we have the alpha-1 antitrypsin protein. It counters the proteases, thereby inhibiting the proteases to some extent. So it must be noted here, alpha-1 antitrypsin protein only lowers the effect of proteases, not turning it off. But when we have the mutation of serpina-1 gene, that time alpha-1 antitrypsin protein is not synthesized at all. And at that time, alveolar wall destruction peaks in that case, since no proteases are getting inhibited here. Furthermore, let's see the alveolar cell damage mechanism. We see when the smoke stimulates the alveolar macrophages to release CXC factors like we get the release of CXCL9, CXCL10 and CXCL11. And for these ligand molecules that CXC factors, we have the CD8 positive cells shown in the diagram. We have the TH1 and TC1 form of CD8 cells. Both these cells have CXCR receptors on their membrane shown in the diagram. So upon the release of CXC factors from alveolar macrophages, they come in and bind with the CXCR receptor shown in the animation. And this ligand binding mediates the release of porphyrin and granzyme B molecules, which leads to emphysema. These factors like porphyrin and granzyme B drives apoptosis of type 1 pneumocytes in the alveolus, thus destructing the lung tissue. Now let's see respiratory function abnormalities in emphysema. 
we see the FEV1 decreases in emphysema and also the FEC decreases in the emphysema and their ratio that's FEV1 by FEC also decreases. Then TLC increases followed by the increase in the RV that is residual volume. The symptoms in the emphysema includes the dyspnea, hyposemia and cough. And sometimes the emphysema is also termed as pink puffles because patient gasps or takes short fast breaths which leads to temporary pinkness in the skin thus called the pink puffles. So this is what the emphysema is and its pathogenesis. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.